I'm Claire Reesmith, Assistant Manager at the Chadwick Garden, and today I'm going to be talking to you about garden scale irrigation systems. So the best irrigation system for your garden is going to depend a bit on the specifics of your situation, what you're growing, size of your garden, shape, um, weed pressure, that sort of thing. Uh, so I'm going to do an overview of the different systems available to you and share a bit about their advantages and disadvantages. Broadly speaking, uh, you can categorize irrigation systems into two categories, overhead systems and drip irrigation. Um, overhead systems are sprinklers and micro sprinklers that apply water from a, a height, and uh, drip uh, systems are systems that really apply water directly to the soil surface. So advantages of overhead systems are that they are easy to use, you can water a really large area, um, and it's a really comprehensive wetting. And uh, advantages of uh, drip systems are that they apply water directly, uh, as directly as possible to plant roots um, and where it's needed, and they're more efficient. So disadvantages of overhead systems are that they are inefficient um, and imprecise. They kind of just get a really large area and you can't get a, a narrow space and disadvantages of drip are that it's a lot of plastic and um, also you can't wet a large area with them. One more thing to think about is that um, when you water overhead, it can encourage a lot of weed seeds to germinate, um, but it can also encourage a lot of biological activity. Also overhead watering, some plants are prone to disease um, when their foliage gets wet, so you wanna be careful to know um, whatever you're growing, make sure uh, overhead is the right move for that. So. Um, first up, let's talk about oscillators as an overhead irrigation tool. Um, the advantage of oscillators are they're very easy to use um, and you can just drag them around the garden and, and set them running. They can wet a really large area, so they're really good for pre-irrigating uh, before you cultivate. Um, you can also use them to wet the plant canopy if it's really hot. Uh, wetting the plant canopy and creating greater humidity and, and cool, cool temperatures in the plant canopy can help uh, plant through uh, heat stress. Um, Disadvantages of oscillators are they are not precise. They wet a really large area, and in order to get thorough wetting in like a garden bed, you're gonna have to wet far beyond um, the length of that bed. Another thing to think about with oscillators is that they emit water in really large droplets, and so the impact of those large droplets, especially coming down from a height, can be pretty dramatic on the soil surface, and it can lead to um, crusting and damaging of the soil structure at, at the soil surface. Um, but also the large droplet size um, makes it more resilient to wind erosion or wind evaporation. So if you're trying to run irrigation, overhead irrigation and wind, oscillators are probably the better way to go because they're less likely to blow away. We use oscillators in the garden um, for wetting really large areas before irrigation and for cooling the plant canopy during times of heat stress. Next up is micro sprinklers. Micro sprinklers um, are a great tool for uh, applying water a little lower to the ground and they also spray in a fine mist. And so they, they have less of an impact on the soil than oscillators would have. Um, they're, they have smaller droplet size, which also means uh, they can get carried away by wind. So trying to run micro sprinklers in windy situations is kind of a bad idea. Most of the water gets lost um, to the air. Uh, you can set them up in, in all different sorts of um, orientations. So if you have like a windy setup or a curved setup, um, they work really well for that. Um, and they can also provide a really comprehensive wetting of uh, an area. And so if you're growing something like uh, fruit trees, which have a, a wide and uh, root system, then they're great because they wet an entire area and not just a narrow band. One thing about micros is they have a much smaller distribution area and so they allow you to irrigate more precisely. So if you're growing in rows rather than just large swaths, um, they allow you to hit precisely where you want to hit and not beyond that. Now let's move over to the world of drip. So the advantage of drip is that you can provide water precisely to where you want the water to go to the plant roots. Um, it has little to no impact on soil structure, whereas overhead watering can damage soil structure. The gentle drip onto the surface of the soil uh, has little to no impact on soil structure. Let's move over into the world of drip. So the advantage of drip is that it's way more efficient than overhead. No water is lost to wind um, blowing water away. You uh, irrigate and provide water directly, almost directly to the plant roots, um, and the gentle drip has little to no effect on the surface of the soil. 
The disadvantages of drip are that uh, it requires a lot of plastic, and depending on the system you use, that plastic is not going to last forever. Um, and it can't wet a whole large area. It's, it wets in a pretty narrow band, um, and it requires a little bit more setup and maintenance than a lot of overhead systems. One of the options you have with drip is what's called uh, drip tape or T-tape. And it's a relatively thin collapsible tube of plastic um, that uses a mechanism uh, in line called the torturous path system, which basically runs water back and forth through a maze. Um, so it reduces the pressure and so it just drips out rather than sprays everywhere. T-tape is not designed to last more than a few years um, and it, it can tear pretty easily. It's designed for long, straight, flat, row cropping, like farm scale, and so um, it doesn't work well around curves, definitely not at corners, um, and on a slope, it uh, tends to create, the slope creates pressure at the bottom of the tape, um, and so you'll get uneven watering. You'll get more water coming out at the bottom um, of the tape than at the top of the tape. But it delivers water exactly where it needs to go. It's really cheap, um, and uh, it's very efficient. Uh, we use drip tape in the garden primarily on beds where we need a lot of uh, drip delivered pretty closely together. Next up, with drip we have a poly emitter line or also called drip line. So this is a thicker plastic, uh, it's more uh, durable, it lasts longer, it, this can last like 20 years. Um, it uses the same torturous path system as, as the drip tape, but it's a little more uh, advanced. Also for slopes, it has a pressure compensation system. So basically um, it will control water to emit at the same pressure um, at the top of the slope as well at the bottom of the slope. So it's really good for slopes. Um, it can be, it's bendable, it's twisty. Um, you can have fittings that can put <laughs> corners on it. <laughs> um, so it can go around corners. Um, and yeah, its chief advantage is that it's really durable and it lasts a very long time. The disadvantage of drip line is that it's pretty expensive, although that will tend to even out the longer you use it. Um, and we use drip line primarily on our perennial plantings, which require relatively less water and um, in bendy or, or curvy situations. So that's the rundown on the different irrigation systems we use in the Chadwick Garden. Um, what system is going to be best for you will depend on if you're working with a slope, um, what your budget is, what sort of shape of garden you have, um, and what, what are the needs of the crops you're growing. I really recommend trying out a few different of these systems and seeing what works best for your space, for your growing environment, and for you. Um, primarily, it's, it's going to depend on what do you find the easiest to use and what do you find uh, works best in your garden. So try a few out, see how they work, and happy gardening.